Hello and welcome to Moffside. Uh, if it's interesting, analytical football chat you're after, well, unfortunately it's Moffside. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to wait a little bit, but hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll offer up something worthwhile that you can listen to for the next half an hour in between Buddhist Radio and uh, Sounds of uh, Journeys into Sound, which is another great show that I actually quite enjoy listening to as well. So, so keep listening to all the way through this. Uh, we're joined in the studio. I, I'm Stuart Moffat, by the way. Hi, how's it going? I'm the host of Moffside. Uh, we've got Holes here. How's it going, Holes? Good, thank you. We've got Leds. How are you? I'm great, Stu. I can't believe you didn't come to me first. But, uh, <laughs> well, I thought I'd go this way around this time. Yeah, I'd never do that again. <laughs> and uh, Leds, a little bit grumpy after not having a game under your belt at the start of the year? Yeah. Um, yeah, suspended last weekend. Um, obviously, quite disappointed, but... It is. It's nice to have a weekend off as well. Yeah. In a way, um, it just came at a bad time, to be honest. Yeah. Well, any time's a bad time, but especially straight after Christmas, after you just want to get straight into it and yeah. get going. But unfortunately, I couldn't. But yeah. uh, so I'll put to bed now. Sweet. Getting ready for this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So, and of course, Danny, you can't take any responsibility now for the um, for the game on Saturday, apart from the fact that you took five yellow cards and wasn't actually in the game yeah apart from that you can bear no responsibility for that result uh, uh, Garvin <laughs> talking about bearing <laughs> responsibility for the result <laughs> how, how are you yeah not bad good intro there <laughs> yeah. I thought it was one of my better ones a bit of a circle there yeah. Yeah. Garvin's never coming back yeah. 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 so yeah so we uh, one one result um, against uh, Phoenix um, watched the game actually because it was on Sky. It was pretty fun, cool to watch that. Um, great times at Phoenix because obviously the um, the senior, the first team are running high in the A League, um, and of course generally when the team's doing well, you kind of feel that kind of knock-on effect through the reserves, and they tend to play play well. And um, they, indeed they did. Although against the run of play, I think we dominated the possession in that game. I think we dominated a lot of that game, but we just didn't manage to uh, score more goals than they did. Which, in my witty analysis of football, led. That, that's how you win the game, right? It is. It's as simple as that, sure, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it was a tough one, I think. Everybody's in the same boat there. It's definitely yeah. a game we, sh- we should have won. Um, but as you said, yeah, loads of possession, and especially in the second half, it was, which is always going to be hard, especially when they go down to 10 men and they just kind of sat in. Yeah. It's always hard to break that down. Um, but yeah, it was just one of them games when the ball wouldn't go in the net, unfortunately. Yeah. Still some positives to take, so... We'll take them and move on to this weekend, another big game. But yeah, definitely, I think everyone's in the same boat. Two points dropped. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. And um, Garth, the uh, the yellow card, the red, well, the yellow card incident, and then the next yellow card incident, which happened like five seconds later, and leading to the red card, that you were obviously involved in that because the, the, the two fouls were on you. Mm. Was that a red card, do you reckon? Um, I don't know. It was probably a little bit harsh. I At the time, I was fuming. I yeah. thought it was a, like he'd cynical twice in a row. Yeah. And he'd gotten away with one or two in the first half as well, yeah. of a couple of dragbacks and stuff. And I thought, like, Chief got booked in after 20 minutes, which was the yellow card, but the ref had started booking people. So I was like, right, right. this fella's going to get a booking as well. Yeah. Didn't give it. Stonewall then, Stonewall red card. Oh, I don't know. I watched it back on the on the highlights, and the first one's yellow. Yeah. yeah he pulls, pulls, pulls it back. But yeah, I think the second one is like a lazy leg, kind of a throws a hip and, yeah, just knocks me over. Um, I think Danny would probably be fuming if he got sent off for that so I think it's a harsh one Yeah. and if yeah I don't think they're two yellow cards I definitely think it's a yellow card but I don't know about the second yeah. one I yeah. don't think the second one's a yellow card yeah. and it's funny how those things go because uh, you know when you, when you have an opposition down to ten men sometimes that actually makes it even harder to, to break down yeah definitely because they've just like just abandoned <coughs> the idea of going forward <laughs> yeah with the red card I think like I agree with the rule as in like we were talking about this earlier in the week it's like if I pull Gareth back and the ref plays an advantage like that doesn't mean that I just have free reign to do what I want then like, yeah. you know but I think if it was me I'd be absolutely fuming with the referee like, the second one I don't think is even a yellow um, 
he just kind of continues on and just trips you up basically yeah. but if you're gonna go bang yellow yellow they have to be two bad tackles like or two like clear up and clear and goal or something like that yeah. Um, yeah if that was me I'd be absolutely fuming I agree with the rule but it would have to be two extreme like kind of tackles or like stopping the runner play or something like that for it to be bang bang yeah. red card yeah um, yeah but wasn't complaining that's the time no right yeah mm. yeah um, and of course we're looking forward now to Tasman on the weekend <coughs> yes the way game yeah we're yeah. in Blenheim in Blenheim yeah yeah that's, that's a weird venue isn't it yeah we have an absolute camel ride on yeah. Saturday um, fly to Christchurch then Nelson yeah. then a bus to Blenheim Nice. Yeah. So, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know, everybody has to do bits and pieces like that throughout the season and balance itself yeah, out. So. Yeah. Now looking forward to. And you'll have Liam Little on the back seat with his um, D- DJing away with his with his tunes to keep everyone keep everyone's spirits high on the, uh, on the bus. Hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, Liam, I haven't heard Liam I'll talk this season. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> the most chill man in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I asked Liam was supposed to. Or we were talking last night about who was going to come on to the podcast. Like, big shout out to Garv. He done his favour, even though he was tenth in line. Um, <laughs> Not really. Yeah, <laughs> I asked Lemo. Yeah. And he said that he's here on the sixth of February. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Which so. is uh, Waitangi Day, isn't it? As well. So it's, it's a holiday. So he'll get paid time and a half for that. That's what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. He's clever. <coughs> but now, thanks for coming in, Garv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Um, I've, later in the show, we're going to actually. We might as well start this bit of, show, bit of the show now, actually. Um, sure. So, uh, I've got a new competition for Mobside, and it's called the Daniel Edwards Goal of the Season competition. <laughs> <laughs> and so far, we've got one nomination for the Daniel Edwards Goal of the Season. Um, the wrong goal, though, was it? Huh? It was in the wrong goal, was it? <laughs> no, it was in the right goal. You sure? I believe. Yeah. Danny Levitt goal of the season yeah he only gets one a season <laughs> exactly it's all I need and the one he got this year was in the wrong goal <laughs> hey, I think Gareth's actually forgetting that I've scored this season I think he is because yeah. I, I think he's thinking because he was so close to the ball that normally he would yeah. put a little toke in there that was my own goal yeah it was a cracker Hawks Bay it was a cracker wasn't it yeah, yeah, a brilliant thought, goal. I thought, and I thought you'd be a brilliantly placed person to tell us <laughs> about that goal oh yeah well <laughs> To be honest, um, ultimate a, disguise. Wasn't yeah, it? Oh, it was. We kind of, and we have a little bit of a an understanding on the pitch sometimes. Sometimes, a lad, um, and yeah, kind of that ball where Leds kind of steps in on his left hand, on, in on his left foot, and yeah. I just kind of go across across the pitch. Yeah, um, has worked for us before, and yeah, just right. it's a difficult one for a defender because they're going the wrong way. And yeah. if I spin in behind, then they can't really turn quick enough to get after me. Yeah, um, and that gives and yeah. Leds that little second extra to, yeah, a little bit more time to, yeah. to lace it. Yeah, yeah, exactly to put it in the top end. Top end, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. Gar's like Gar's just a kind of uh, like a disguised run. Disguised run, um, yeah. And then the turf, the spin off the turf. So basically, the turf scored. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> the turf so far, has more goals than me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so far the description of the goal sounds sounds brilliant. Yeah, sounds the skies. Goal. Yeah, spin. Yeah, I don't want to put I don't want to put too much work on Holly. If you've got time, put put it in. If you haven't, don't worry because nah, we're not going to lose anything. Yeah. Stick it in. <laughs> stick it in. Okay. We're yeah. to watch. So yeah. So that's so so far we've got one nomination for the Dan Abbott goal of the season. Um, hopefully by the end of the season we'll have a couple more nominations that we can really have a you know go to go to uh, go to town on the Dan Abbott's goal of the season competition. Please God, yeah. 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 We won't. Yeah. We won't hold stop, breath, stop like. getting suspended, we'd be fine. We might get a few more. <laughs> Someone you know. has to tackle it. Someone has to put the tackles in, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, maybe timely you... tackles would be good. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, some of the yellows this year have, have not been yellows. Like the one, the handball, the, oh, yeah. the handball, handball, <laughs> handball, like eighty yards out from goal. Like, I've tried to block, and it's hit me hand, which is beside my body. And the, the oh, yeah, the yellow card was out of his pocket before the yeah. ball hit the ground. But yeah, some of them are. Yeah, interesting. interesting. I won't say too much. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, there's some things that we don't want to get too much into, like um, like massive arguments with the referees union yeah. <laughs> mm. um, about you know who's the right the rights and wrongs of uh, of officials and you know whether they've done the right 
thing or not. That's not really what we're saying. And obviously, the referee's right because the referee's in the game and they're, they're managing the game. Mm. And of course, by definition, they're right. And that's, that's all fine. Yeah. But just post analysis, sometimes we can question whether or not that's yeah. just make sure Lindsay's in not the here cold for the light show. of day. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, this is who I'm actually <laughs> aiming at. Lindsay, yeah. so that yeah. we can we're tell sorry, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> in the cold light of the day, we can maybe um, add some analysis to the final. <laughs> the final yeah. decision of the referee. Just analysis. Yeah. And just Thought analysis. Yeah. So, Garvin. Yeah. <coughs> so, how many goals are we on at the moment? How uh, many goals? Yeah. Five. Five. And does that include the last game against Tasman? Yes. Yes. So, that's. How many score then? One. Just one, yeah. Yeah, so. They, four, they still stand. They stand. Yeah. They stand. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 Cool. So, this, week, this weekend, of course, a uh, little bit of Rewengi. Uh, against sure. the uh, Tasman side. I noticed last week when I saw Stephen Lawless name on the um, substitute bench uh, I did, my mind did go back to the Tasman game and I thought obviously they've given Stephen Lawless the job of doing the spreadsheets uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought <laughs> jammy bugger he's actually put his own name down yeah. <laughs> You're in the position, go and do it, you know. Yeah, so so, 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 so fair play, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, I would probably have done the same thing. You yeah. might, if you had, if you looked at the team sheet, you might just suddenly see my name <laughs> in as, a, <laughs> as the fifth substitute. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, I think it was for everybody from the outside watching in, like it was a big, big surprise. But for, for us boys, um, it's kind of been in the pipeline for a while, I think. Like not nobody, yeah, other than the, players that are training every week like nobody realises Stevie's actually a very good player yep um, like came yeah came over with the intentions of doing strength and conditioning um, which he has done unbelievably but uh, he's also a very good player yeah uh, he's played at quite a like, he's played League of Ireland level back home yeah so I think it was always in the pipeline that if there was a couple of injuries yeah. here and there and every now and then he gets involved in the training and he's every single time he's the hardest working in training like yeah I think he kind of <coughs> sets the standard because yeah. that's like that's his kind of it, it has been noticed from the sidelines because when you guys do your little warm ups before the games at home, a lot of the people on you know on the on the side are going, "Who's who's who's that guy? He's pretty decent." Mm. When they say, you know he's he's picking balls around and he's yeah. he's drilling it into your chest and just really good delivery and yeah, and no, so he's he's actually a very good player. Yeah. Um, and it was yeah, it was good to see him on the pitch as well. It was a little bit funny. Yeah. Can't believe he wore number six. Number which six I'll never yeah. forgive him for. But. <laughs> We've been looking for you know a left-legged midfielder for a couple of years now, so <laughs> finally we have one. You know, yeah. someone can get on the ball. And, yeah, exactly. You know, make tackles. <laughs> yeah, timely tackles. Yeah. Uh, you know. Who took the corner that Cromie scored off? Um, Strangely, me. Yeah. Was it you? Yeah, I was on the corners for the for the game. Yeah. yeah. Best deliveries all year, but your luck. You know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I actually uh, thought that was actually quite a well <coughs> delivered corner. Were you, were you actually picking out Crummy? Uh, no, but in the to be fair, we did a few <clears> on. Thursday before the game yeah. uh, and I was on the far side crossing them in on my right yeah. and it's obviously easier to d- in-swing yeah. um, and then on the other side it's a little bit more difficult because obviously it's, it goes outwards so, just so I just did one on Thursday yeah. quite similar to that and I think Cromie shinned it in and it, <laughs> she shinned it in on Sunday or Saturday as well so. to be fair like when, I was, yeah. when I was watching the game and we got a corner I was surprised Garb was still taking them out on Thursday <laughs> 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 Ooh. It's coming a bit closer. <laughs> you know, we scored off a corner this year, and it was my delivery. So you it was know, your delivery, yeah. You know, but we, that's uh, all I'd say. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, obviously, uh, you can still see that you would probably want Garth in the box, uh, yeah. being the fox yeah. in the box, looking for scraps as well. So I think, yeah, when I saw my name on the, <clears throat> on the on the corners at the start, I was kind of like, oh, when Stevie always put you down for corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically Stevie's fault. Um, yeah, I obviously want to be in the box and scoring goals and being around it, just to be like a nuisance and yeah. if the ball drops. That's what I like to be, but. Yeah, look, if I'm taking corners and we're scoring from corners, then you yeah. just it's the way it is. It's Gaffer. not broke, don't think. Yeah, the, the gaffer says that's yeah. the way it goes, like you know. So, yeah. run into the corner, shot over your head. Yeah, swinging shirts, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Um, so, Govan, this is your third time. On yeah, this I, was, <laughs> I was actually thinking about it in the drive in. Yeah, uh, oh, I've heard, yeah. I watched, yeah. uh, I used to watch soccer when I was younger, and yeah. Tim Lovejoy and Helen Chamberlain used to present an old hat trick oh, ball, yeah. and I'm, I'm actually. Disappointed ball. it's not here to be honest. Yeah. Well, F- funny you should say that. We actually have a um <laughs> a hat trick that pair a hat-trick of ears. ear, is it? Yeah. <laughs> pair of ears. Oh yeah. So you can actually just now Thanks. Yeah. just yeah. need you to return them tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> great. Who I'm buzzing with that. <laughs> 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 yeah, three times so. That's fantastic. I reckon I'm the most called upon guest. Called upon guest. Tenth in line, but still coming up, you know. 
Yep, yeah, ten to nine, but still coming up. Well, Abs, Abs is oh, co-hosted, yeah, so abs yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, late substitution in there because there was no host. <laughs> late substitution. <laughs> <laughs> Because one, one of the I'll, I'll take, hosts was suspended. Yeah, <coughs> I'll take joint uh, a joint hat trick ball at Abs so if you want. That's really good. So I'm just, we just give him one of the ears. Yeah. yeah so in light of that, then obviously this is going to this is going to be a really, really, really good medium fire round. Yeah. Medium well, fire round. Okay. Okay. Looking um, for, I'm, looking I'm actually going to gonna mix it up. Yep. <laughs> so because Garv's already done it, I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to involve Holly as well. <coughs> so we're going to play a game. You know. So we done this game last year with Liam McDevitt. Yeah. Remember the one where like you and Tony done it and me and Lassie done it and it's yeah. basically like who's yeah. better at something and then You can you see it on YouTube on this link. <laughs> <laughs> you are making my job impossible. <laughs> <laughs> impossible. Uh, yeah, but we don't have like pen and paper, so we're just gonna do a hands up way. So I'm gonna take that, Holly. Okay. I've got a convenient No, but you just yeah. Um <laughs> Holly, can you move closer to Gareth, please? <laughs> So this is about the like the the life of working in football south. So I've just got five questions. That's so, gonna be way better off than me. So basically we're just I'm gonna ask you as a question. Yeah. And like if <laughs> hands up means Garv and hands down means Holly. Alright? So it's yeah. as easy as that. Yeah, okay. And if it's a tie, Stu has the decider. <clears throat> Alright? This is gonna make great radio. But. So I'm gonna ask a question and I'll count down from three. Either put your hand up or down. Up is Garv, down is Holly. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? No. And nice. for the radio That's listeners, I'll just say who it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All right. First one. Who buys more coffees? Three. Oh, sorry. See what I mean? <laughs> I said any sorry, questions. Sorry. Sorry. So hands up is Garv. Yep. Hands down sorry. is Holly. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Media officer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yeah. Right. Hands down. So that's it. So Unanimous Holly. for Holly. Garv is about on this year. <laughs> century. <laughs> All right, next one. Who's better at table tennis? Hands up for Garv, hands down for Holly. Three, two, one. That's oh. Garv. I've got to be honest. i got to be honest. I don't know. I think it's quite close. Garv and Williams. Oh. Right, right, next. I'll just point out that I'm the best in the office, too. Yeah. But like we won't yeah. get into it's that. that. That's hands a lie. Or, hands <laughs> to, uh, yeah. He's, he's yeah. lying, Stu. Don't, just don't listen. <laughs> yeah. Right, next question. Who's better at their job? <laughs> <coughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a little bit split. So um, it's a toy no, here. So yeah. Garv's vote for Holly. Yeah. And Holly's vote for, for Garv. Garv. So oh, let's Holly's get the final decision. Oh, one hundred percent, one million percent, Holly. Did <laughs> 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 stop cancelling again? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Next question: Who is more likely to become CEO of Football Town? Three, two, one. You are kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Again, split decision, but they vote, they vote for each other this time. So Holly's voted for herself, and Gar's voted for himself. Decider, Stu. Yeah. Who do you reckon? Uh, I reckon uh, it's probably going to be. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be the first female CEO. <laughs> so I'm going to go for Holes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, last question. We need to get Garvin as a striker. I mean, we don't yeah, have a burden exactly. to yeah, yeah. Yeah, You're not going to be CEO tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. Yeah. It's fine, it's fine. As CEO, you can stay as my competitions manager. <clears throat> oh, that's nice. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> right, last question. Who's moodier? Three, two, one. <laughs> and Holly no, that one. That. No. Oh, split. They're both, they're both voting for each other again. If we're basing right. it off this week... Garvin. Oh, they always has a smile on her face, to be yeah, fair. So Garvin is the moodiest. So Garvin's the moodier. Moodiest. It's a striker, I mean, it's allowed. Yeah. Oh, he has his days. Yeah. Hmm. These guys keep me pretty chirpy, though. Yeah. So that's fair. I quite like quite like this job. <laughs> How are you, Joe? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's the new game. thought I'd mix it up, because Garvin's already done meeting for her now, and then yeah. kind of put, put some viewers to sleep, I heard. So. Yeah. Wow. Mix it up. He's coming for me today, isn't he, Stu? It is, yeah. Yeah, strange that. So does that mean I won? Well, there's not really a winner. There's oh. not really any winners. Well, Garb has two ears, so he probably wins. It's a good game. <clears throat> yeah, we don't. I like that. We don't <laughs> do we don't do winners, <laughs> do we? Let's muscle. We just do about learning about resilience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's all about participation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here's your certificates, both of you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've still got a lot of time to chat to Limerick's top 
Dunedin export in the football <laughs> arena. <laughs> I reckon I'm probably the only person I've never been Dunedin. You reckon? Oh no, actually, I don't think so. I think, I think we, we'll get. We met one before. I met one before. Yeah. Last year had one on a coaching course. From oh, Limerick. Yeah. Yeah. From Limerick. Yeah. And then she was, and we met her then again at the Mini World Cup. Her her kid was oh, yeah. playing, and she was just there. Oh yeah. Could hear the accent from a mile away. Just went yeah, over and started, talk, it, started talking to her yeah. then. Yeah. I, and I, I always think about the rhyming couplets thing. I've, always, I've said yeah. it before, you know, the boy still in the burning deck, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, it's not my, not my specialty. It's <laughs> not your specialty. Oh, we're not going to go there. Yeah, again, but, you know, again, I keep reminding you, you do have an English literature degree. Yeah. So like, sometimes I just expect, you know, a bit of poetry or yeah. something from you, but every time it's just nothing. No. So I've, I think I've asked you this before, like, when you're <clears> studying <throat> English literature, yeah. like, what's your... Like, where do you want to go in life, like, job wise? So, what's the perfect, like, what's your dream job as someone who studied English literature? Or was it just. Oh, like, to be honest, the reason I. <laughs> my mother won't be happy with this, but the reason I did <laughs> English literature, or I just. So, when I was uh, 17 or 18, I was like, uh, or 16, I suppose, I was like, I'm going to go to England, like, I'm going to play football in England. Mm. And then, obviously, you get to a point where you're like, yeah, maybe not, like, I might not get that opportunity. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I was living in Limerick, there's a big university on my doorstep. Yeah. And my mother was like, you're not finishing school and not going to university. I'm relatively bright in school, so yeah. we do leave insert for anyone who doesn't know that. You do six subjects, and you can get a maximum of 100 points per subject, and then you add up all your points at the end of that, and that's yeah, each, each the course then is, yeah. yeah, graded on points. So yeah. doctor is 600, uh, physio is 550, and it goes all the way down. So I was middle at the table, I was 400. So, um, Did you yeah, get 400 in your leaving? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I just said my mother was like, "You have to go and do uh, go and do something third third level." So yeah, I just yeah applied for a couple of courses in in the university, and that was the one I got. And yeah, yeah, like to be honest, it was great because <clears throat> about twelve hours a week of class time, and then yeah. lots of lots of outside class, but you could do that in the evening. So I was training every morning yeah. with Limerick, and then yeah, it was just perfect. A yeah. um, couple of slip ups, I failed the year once, so I had to repeat that and stuff like that. So. But yeah, just went and did it, and then, to be honest, I kind of when I was halfway through it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna look at being a, a teacher or yeah. something like that, and yeah, it was gonna be like go back. So it's obviously not a direct course to you're not gonna become an English mm. teacher, but <clears throat> you could go and do PE teaching as a master's or whatever like that, and yeah, PE teaching wouldn't be a bad one, if, especially if you're playing football. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think the op- this opportunity coming out here was kind yeah. of right at the end of my. Yeah. But like it must have a million branches, does it? Like millions, honest yeah. to God. <clears throat> it's a degree as well that like uh when you look we were look I was looking at masters the other day for in like sports coaching and stuff like that and basically my my degree will just any anything. Yeah. <clears throat> any any master you want to do, that degree will let you will allow you in as a, a level eight like qualification yeah. before you go in and it's yeah. it's kinda like that. Yeah. The only the only little thing is like it's it was yeah, you'd, you really wanted to be good at, like, enjoy reading and enjoy writing essays because was a, there was a lot of that in it, so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I enjoyed it, and it was, yeah. I did English at A-levels, which is, the like, the one below university entrance. Yeah. But I um, have to say, a lot of those people in English literature were Irish. There was a lot of James Joyce. I had to read the Dubliners a lot. Joyce, yeah, that was one of my <coughs> toughest ones. I did the Ulysses for literally yeah, Ulysses, James I Joyce. I haven't got a clue what's going on in that book. Not a clue. Know. There's, like, 19 books or something yeah, in, uh, within the one book, and it is carnage honestly yeah. carnage it's a day so it's 19 books about one singular day madness <laughs> yeah no all different yeah. characters cross referencing like brilliant unbelievable writing yeah but like who knows what's going on I don't even think me. Joycey knows what's going on Joycey, Joycey, yeah, Joycey. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on halfway through well, he, he used to turn up at training didn't he? Was, well, at you know, he, was, he was writing in the morning and he'd turn up at training and it was, yeah. it'd fit around his he's a good winger to be fair good wi- yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah hell of a lot of speed yeah. on that guy yeah James Joyce mad yeah, mad as well. <laughs> so you said there, Gav, about you wanted to go to England. Yeah. How close did you get, or did you get ah uh, opportunities at all? Not, not, not really. Like, I was in Limerick, small city, um, and made my to my to be fair to my dad. Like after Kennedy Cup, he was like, "Look, you got to go, and mm. if you want to, if you really want to do it, like you have to go somewhere else." Because like, Limerick's small. One, there was one club. All the Kennedy Cup players went to the one team. They were smashing teams twelve yeah. nil. Like, there's no development here. Like, so got into like a regional centre. Um, but like yeah decided that it was time to move on so went to, down to Cork which is about the size of probably Christchurch it's a yeah a big enough big city like big yeah. enough city and yeah just went and played there for two years got to like the National Cup final and the semi-final which was a decent 
be like getting to like the Chatham Cup final but for junior football yeah um, and yeah there was a couple of good players a couple of went away like to clubs but yeah never quite mm. got there um, yeah just yeah, a couple of Irish like Irish trials and things like that and, but yeah never never really a chance to yeah. no yeah, opportunity to go over which is yeah never say never though yeah. never say never absolutely but it just it was a key for he or Rory Rory Gaffney friend of mine 26 26 yeah, when he went over yeah you know, he went over at 26 26 yeah he went. To, he was at Salford and yeah. Bristol Rovers, stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. And he's where is he now? <laughs> if you know that, he's, some, he's somewhere now. Still League Two, I think. So, yeah. But like, he's probably yeah. at home listening. Yeah. 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 Poor fella. But yeah. worked. He worked unbelievably hard, like mm. to get to where he was. So. Did you ever go to England? <coughs> uh, trials. Point? Yeah. Yeah. Couple of trials at different stages, but nah, not never came about. Pound down. Yeah. yeah, it's difficult. It's it's, 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 a, it's a really difficult uh, environment, especially when you go over young. Um, like the first time I went over, I think I was sixteen. Went over for two weeks um, to a championship club at the time because we had a like we had a link with them. It wasn't a case of you know they came and watched me and said bring him over. It was just they co- we kind of sent sent some players over every now and then. But it is it's very difficult, especially for a young kid. Um, you're going over. You're in a random house with a random family training twice a day um, yeah walking into the dressing room on day one is like one of the most daunting experiences I've ever had because like, yeah everybody knows each other and you're walking in and <clears throat> the thing I like about it is that they actually treat you like a trialist so when I walked in like boys are looking at me and like saying you're trying to get a contract from me like so I'm not going to be nice to you like, yeah, it's yeah. that rootless like, yeah. which is a good thing because <clears throat> like if you're meant to be there like you're you're tough enough for that environment and you'll go and play and it'll work out obviously there's a slice of luck involved that like everybody that's there like there's always a slice of luck yeah. people especially that go from Ireland like really like what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of good players in Ireland that should be in England but they're not because yeah. they just missed out on that yeah. little slice of luck but nah really really tough experience but great experience as well like you know yeah. Yeah. great experience yeah yeah. I think my my brother went over like yeah. at, at fifteen like and went into a digs like fifteen year old like a kid like like was knew what he wanted to do but like was going in with blind like into a club where he knew nobody yeah. didn't have a clue like in and it was like tough enough yeah I'm sure at the start but like it's an unbelievable environment to be in like they're professional like, yeah. every morning like a pro like a proper pro club like yeah. you know ten pitches around yeah. pro coaches e- like everything you could want um. Yeah, and just he absolutely loved it, like absolutely loved it, um, and yeah, like he was homesick and stuff like that. But like, it's only across. Well, for us, it's only across the water. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a fifty-minute flight. Like to get to to he was in Huddersfield. We used to fly to Manchester. Yeah, like get cheap flights to get over for ten or like twenty yeah, or yeah, yeah. twenty or like madness. Yeah, to, and you could go see him. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, like as Danny said, it's it's rootless. Like, it's you against the next fella sitting mm-hmm. beside you in the restroom room. Is like well. You know, it's you get to eighteen, like Rona got to eighteen and it was like of the eighteen in his group, so eighteen players, sixteen of them were gone. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So like he was one mm. of two that got kept. Which is like at at eighteen years old being told like, Oh sorry, like you've you've got to the end of the road here, you need to move on, you're gone. Like after being lots of those English boys have been in academies for fifteen mm. like since they're five, like, you know, mm. for fifteen years, ten, fifteen years. To be told then sorry you're not going to be good enough mm. um, I'm sure it's incredibly tough Like, and yeah. then it happened to, to be fair to Ronan yeah. got told got got a three year deal pro deal and then at the end of that was told yeah look thanks for all your hard work and yeah. stuff but you're just not going to you're not going to cut the level of the top of the, the game in England at the moment um, which I'm, I'm sure like a, any player who's been told that you're not going to make it it's incredibly tough mm. like, so yeah. um, <coughs> it's all but about even at that, like the reaction that, of that like, yeah. Yeah. like the 18 players and two of them are getting kept on like them two players have probably spent ninety five percent of their their last two years with that group of players, yeah. and suddenly sixteen of them are no longer there. Like, yeah. so, yeah, it is. It's so ruthless. But that's eleven percent success rate. It's not great, like, yeah. is it? Um, and yeah. w- to be fair to a couple of that group, like, went off, and you go to other clubs, mm. and they'll get in, and few of them now have progressed. Like Ronan's back in the League of Ireland, yeah, and he's he's like back at pro level, but. You know, obviously England is like your pinnacle leagues and stuff like that you want to be over there yeah. um, and lots of those boys who were left go at, six, at 17 or 18 have found their way back into football yeah, um, yeah. you know in, and they're, they're now playing like league one league two yeah. a couple of them mm. are <coughs> yeah. um, which is yeah it's great 
to see and it's not impossible to do. That's just, as you just said though, because of the, the, the two who do make it and then others come back in, it's just as accessible to be in an academy, get ditched, and then come back in. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. 10 different ways yeah, of, of doing it. Yeah. And yeah, players do it at different times. Sure, at 16 and 17, like, you still, yeah, like you know, but you don't really know. Like, there's still players that, as yeah. Gareth said, they're going to be let go from a Huddersfield. Like, they could have played could end up playing for Liverpool in three years time like yeah. you know what I mean it's yeah. just like loads of things come into it like managers preferences like the way they play yeah. the setup of the first team do they suit yeah. it I was reading, reading an article about Jordan Henderson this week I don't know if you read it but it's saying the same kind of stuff about how, how all his career he's been like yeah he's just on the edge not quite sure yeah. if he's good enough and then mm. yeah he's good enough and then he's, he's managed to get through all the different grades by the skin of his teeth yeah. to the point when now people are saying he's like the most important player in England yeah, and it's just yeah. That'll show you how much like determination, and hard work, and like passion and want yeah. will get you. Like, because yeah, yeah. Jordan Henderson, by no stretch of the imagination, w- when he was at Sunderland, was not the best midfielder. No, probably not even the best midfielder at Sunderland. Like, yeah. yeah. And now he's w- he's won a Champions League and f- touch wood, <coughs> he'll win a Premier League this year. Like, yeah. Um, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And he's England Player of the Year in 2019. Exactly. Like, yeah. So nobody ten years ago or five years ago said Jordan Henderson was going to be that. Like, so. No. It shows like just because you're not there when you're, I suppose, yeah, 18 or whatever just, he was, 21. Then. Just keep going, kids. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've come we've come to the end of uh, our t- allocated time. It's been a bit, a bit of a really good chat. Um, people have been saying um, all the way through that I've been speaking to. We've got to get Mossad on for a bit longer, and I think this is a really good example of probably why because we've just probably stopped the chat at quite a good junction. Uh, so we'll look to see if we can actually get some uh, some longer sessions uh, from Offside in the future. But uh, for this week, Garvin, thanks for having you on. It's been a brilliant, good chat, and you were not definitely definitely weren't the tenth uh, tenth guest. You were. Thanks. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on your probably about the third. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leds, well done, uh, and keep up the uh, the nominations for Dan Lewis Club of the Season. Uh, oh, well. Coming, please. Oh well, thanks. Uh, Holes, thanks for everything you do and all your work, and fantastic, and and uh, uh, much appreciate all your stuff. Uh, this is Moffside. Uh, I'm Stuart Moffat, and I oh, and Cochrane. <laughs> <laughs> oh,